But I want to have a little talking video about like why I really like using serverless and Lambda functions. We've been using Lambda at work for the past like four or five years to deploy basically our entire application, right? All the APIs deployed with Lambdas, all of our like asynchronous functions that do long running executions run on Lambdas. And overall, I think out of the box, Lambda just gives you a lot of stuff that really helps you as a developer not have to focus on the maintainability and monitoring of your software. So let's take a step back and talk about like how do you typically deploy an Express application or a Nest JS application or any type of like web server? Usually you have to have an actual like executable. So for example, with, with Express, you'd have to like do a node space index.js and that's gonna run your Express server. And you can rent a VM and you can get that hosted on the VM. But there are a lot of downsides to doing that. First of all, you need to make sure that your Express server never, never runs out of memory. You need to make sure that if it were to crash, you can restart it, right? So you need to set up like PM2 or some type of forever script to basically just restart your Express service if it were to crash. Another issue with having your own like a running Express service is let's say you have 100 concurrent connections. Like there's 100 people trying to hit your API at the same time. And for some reason, your API crashes. Well, that's 100 people who just lost their data, right? Their, their requests are gone. Maybe they're trying to insert data. Maybe they're trying to retrieve data. All that stuff is killed because the server is basically sharing the entire process. And when the process gets killed, maybe there's a bug in your code. You threw an exception that you didn't catch. Basically, all your connections are killed, right? So, and then on top of that, you have to worry about scaling. How do you scale up your Express service if you get a lot of traffic, right? Right now, you have a single VM with a single Express server in there you have to figure out a way to scale it. Luckily, PM2 has ways to like increase the amount of threads and kind of scales under the hood. But at some point, you're gonna hit a threshold with that vertical scaling approach. You have to do horizontal scaling. Another issue, I don't know how many issues I'm at now, but another issue is you have to be able to monitor your production logs and your memory and CPU usage of the machine, right? If you're not monitoring those things, if you don't have access to production logs and people start doing requests and stuff just starts throwing errors, and you have no insight as to what went wrong, what were the exceptions thrown, you have to basically set that all up yourself. I haven't done like VMs in a while, but last time I did it, I had to set up a lot of stuff to basically take the log files, make sure you're rotating them, take all the contents of the log files and ship them off somewhere. For example, I think we ship them off to Elk is like Logstash, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. And basically, you have to do all this stuff manually just to kind of monitor your systems. A lot of downfalls to having your own VM. And again, you can containerize this, and maybe that makes some of this stuff easier. But overall, it's just a lot of work. So what I like to do is we do something called a mono lambda, where we'll take that Express service, the entire code that's used for Express, and we'll put it in a single lambda. And I will let the lambda itself do the routing. So if I do a request to a certain endpoint on API Gateway, That'll invoke my Lambda, and then my Lambda's Express router inside will basically figure out, okay, what do I need to run? So what are the benefits of using Lambda, and why do I like doing that approach for my APIs? Basically, again, and a lot of the benefits basically counteract the, the negatives I said with hosting your own thing. Um, for example, every execution of your Lambda is going to run in isolation. So if you have 100 people hit your Lambda at the same time, if one of them throws an exception, like a fatal exception, it's only that one person who's affected. All the other Lambdas that are currently running will not be affected at all. So there's a nice isolation that's provided when you run in lambdas, which makes your system more resilient to issues. Um, in terms of scaling, it's pretty easy to like scale up. Like you can basically create one lambda and just throw a bunch of traffic to it. And you'll see that lambda start provisioning a bunch of different runners, um, warming up containers behind the scenes, I guess. And it'll just kind of handle that traffic for you. Whether you're just doing like one request a second or 100 requests a second, you'll see the Lambda just scale up automatically for you. And you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, which is great. So another cool thing about Lambdas is that you can version your Lambdas, which I think allows you to quickly roll back Lambdas if something goes wrong. So for example, if you were to publish a new version 70 and it has a critical bug, you can just roll it back to 69 um, pretty easily, right? Pretty cool. I like that feature. Lambdas also integrate really well with everything else in Amazon. So if you're at a company or a corporation that really likes hosting everything into AWS, like it's pretty easy to just start hooking the stuff up and giving it permissions to do what it needs to do inside of Lambda. Um, as far as scaling the individual resources of the Lambda, I believe you can go to like your configurations and you can actually increase your timeouts of the Lambda. You can increase how much storage is in here. I think the memory can go up to almost 10 gigs of memory, which is crazy. I mean, the most I think you probably need is like 756, unless you're doing some crazy computation inside of Lambda. And then timeout, I believe can go up to 15 minutes. So a lot of these services that you might use, 
they, send, they tend to give you like a hard coded limit of like 10 seconds or 30 seconds. But if you're using Lambda directly, you can bump that up to 15 minutes, assuming you're not limited by API gateway and stuff like that. So another thing I like about Lambdas is that you, are, you automatically have built-in monitoring. So like as request invocations are coming in, you can see how long did that request take? And you can also see how much you were kind of billed for that request, okay? I believe there's more metrics you can get, but you kind of have to become like a guru at the CloudWatch um, logs in the Lambda Insights. But there are ways to get more information about your Lambda functions, um, like how long the execution took, how much memory those things used, et cetera. So like I mentioned with the express downfalls, is like you have built-in logging auto, like already. So if I click on view CloudWatch logs, this will take you to a log stream which has every single log of every single invocation of your Lambda. So automatically like this stuff prints out, all your console logs will print out to the log stream. And you can forward these to like Elasticsearch or Kibana to have a better way to kind of parse through your logs if you want to. There's also um, Log Insights, which is a more robust way to search through your logs if you're kind of willing to take the time to figure out this uh, query syntax. But it's very, very useful. Okay, there you go. I refreshed the page and now if you go to the monitor, I can see like all my recent invocations. I can see how long this stuff takes. You can actually go to metrics over here. You can see how many invocations that I get on a certain time period, how long do those invocations take, were there any errors, were there any throttles, a lot of good information, right? So you have all this stuff built in out of the box, which I think is just so much better than using like your own, roll your own express service. Now I will say there are downsides to using Lambda. The first one everyone mentions is the cold starts. Those can be an issue. Um, I will say if your application is actually getting any type of real traffic, at some point you'll have enough Lambdas that are warm that you will not, be, like your users will not notice these cold starts, right? Maybe one user out of 100 or 200 requests might notice them because I think these containers stay up for like 20, 30 minutes. So if you're actually getting real traffic to your API, I don't think a cold start's as big of an issue as a lot of people make it out to be. I could be wrong, you can call me out in the comments, but it is something to keep in mind because it can take two to three seconds, um, even more depending on how much stuff you're loading when your node application starts uh, executing. And that three to four seconds could be a make or break it for your users trying to buy your product, et cetera. So if you're trying to do something where load time is like super mission critical, maybe you need to do your own like containers that are just running an express service or some type of other approach that really makes this stuff as low latency as possible. Um, another downside is that your Lambdas have like a 250 megabyte limit. So we've actually hit into this many times at work where we have a Lambda that needs to generate PDFs that PDF processing needs something called Puppeteer. That Puppeteer library uses Chromium, which is basically like the web browser, and it uses it in a headless mode. And having all that stuff set up in a Lambda layer eats up like a huge portion of that 250 megabyte limit. So you can be very limited um, sometimes when you just wanna do something simple, like I need to generate PDF, you start hitting all these limits and you just can't do it in Lambda. So then you have to go back to the drawing board and be like, okay, well, let's figure out a different way because I can't use Lambdas. Maybe I do need to have like a container that processes various events from like an SQS queue and generates and churns on these PDFs and saves in the S3 or something. But I would say that if you can try to get it working in Lambda first, I think it'll be the biggest bang for your buck because like I mentioned all those other pros um, at the start of this video. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's some other stuff I, I left out. Again, like you can hook an API gateway up to this and you can have a fully working REST API just like this. You can have it be a custom domain if you want, but this is all using API gateway to basically host my, my express service, okay? And again, I'm only getting charged per invocation and it's like dirt cheap. For every time you do a request to your API, it's pretty dirt cheap. So. That's another benefit. I don't have like a computer that's just sitting there and I'm being charged monthly for that, those resources that I'm not using. I just get charged for every invocation. But that can be a double-edged sword because if you end up doing a bunch of different requests, like a cron job, then in that case, it might be better to just like have a self-running service. You kind of have to crunch the numbers to figure out like what is the better approach in terms of uh, long-term costs. But usually Lambdas are always going to save you a lot of money you don't have dedicated resources just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about. I know I kind of just jumped around, but I hope you guys enjoyed that little overview of why I like using Lambdas. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to give me a comment and like and subscribe and press the bell icon. I have a Discord channel that you can find in the description if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to ask questions to some other developers. 
And I have a newsletter that you're welcome to subscribe to if you want to get some tips, tricks in the future about programming or just JavaScript in general. Have a good day. Happy coding.